So here we are now, ready for part two. I tidied and tidied, cleaned and cleaned. I redistributed things all over the house. I haven't just shoved them all in, the, in another room. And I've cleaned things and I've displayed the things I like. And uh, the shelves are tidy now. There's space on them. So I might be able to put things... Oh, all my tins. I like my tins. And then, oh, I had to move a load of jars, and so I had, I had to move the teacups, basically. And so there is the tidy, tidy shelves, and as I promised you, a clear table. All right, here we go, in a second. A clear table. And a clear windowsill. Uh, apples are there, because I'm de dealing with a lot of apples at the moment. But the windowsills are all clear and I hoovered all the dead flies off the windowsill. <laughs> Got all the cobwebs down. The top of the drawers there are all uh, tidy and clean. Job well done. Hi, so I'm sitting outside in my pavilion. It's an absolutely beautiful day. I spent the whole of this morning indoors cleaning and sorting and tidying. And now I want to make this part two video into part two of the indigo. So here we go. Way back, and I'll leave a little, I think I've learned how to leave a little eye card in the corner so that if you want to go back and watch the video where I dyed these, it was months and months ago. I, no, no, I didn't dye them. I um, cut them up. I already had them dyed from a while ago and I made lots of squares this size with the idea that what I was going to do, what I am going to do, is make curtains for the big spare bedroom upstairs in a design called Pajagi. Now this is all indigo dyed uh, and I did it a couple of years ago and cut it up for that project but then I wouldn't, if you remember or if you watch it you'll see that I prepared a lot more fabric ready to dye more indigo. So I did a lot more um, pieces like this. I'll show you them now. These are just pieces of cotton that are tie-dyed if you like and I'm going to put those in the bucket of water that I've got there especially for the purpose. I'll show you all this. It's going to be hard to do this because I'm going to be doing it and filming it but we'll see. I'll, I'll edit it, it somehow. So I, I've got all of these that are like little, and then this one, this one's been towards the end of doing it. This is a scrunched up one, which will make something that looks a bit like that, a scrunched up kind of pattern. I'm just going to put all these in the water. Um, this one, th th I made these months ago. This is just little pegs that are little clips that are clipped onto the fabric, which will make a pattern. Into the water it goes. That's just a piece of... <laughs> cotton fabric that's just rolled up and tied in a knot and then this one's kind of fun this one is cotton fabric that's tied around a plastic tube put that in the water as well so I'm going to put all of these in the water uh, just so that they soak right through because it's better if they go into the dye bath wet so I I made the dye bath yesterday I measured out uh, caustic soda, nasty stuff, so I've got uh, gloves on and a mask as well. And all the quantities for this, uh, maybe I'll leave them in the description down below. So I measured out the caustic soda. The bucket next to me has got uh, warm water in, uh, in that goes. And then this stuff's called hydrops and it's part of the chemical process of uh, indigo dyeing. You see the cross on it there, it's pretty nasty stuff. I uh, measured that out. Don't need much. 15 grams, I think it was. And then here are the indigo grains. Uh, and um, I measured those out. And I gave the... Um, before I put the indigo in, I gave the bath a good stir with a stick. It's really important not to get oxygen into the dye bath because the indigo will oxidise when it hits uh, air. And so I did the stirring, a very tiny, minimal bit of stirring that I did there with the stick. Oh, here I am with my... Um... <laughs> there we go. So I've got the table here. This is the dye bath that I made yesterday. And this is the all the fabric that I've just put into this bucket full of water here. And, and Norma, are you going to be in this video or are you going to be out of this video? 
she might put in an appearance. Now, <laughs> come on, down. It's amazing. Indigo is amazing. If you believe in magic, and why wouldn't you, then, you know, indigo is where, where fabric magic happens. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Watch when it comes out of the dye bath. It'll only stay in there for about a minute or so, and it's green. It's an amazing green. I sometimes wish it would stay that colour because I do love that colour. But then watch what happens. We'll get one out now. So all the fabric that I've had in the cold water then, I'm just going to squeeze it out really well because I don't want to dilute the dye bath down. Also, can you see there's a cover on this bucket? It's a really good bucket because we're trying to keep as much air, oxygen, out of the indigo dye bath as possible. So I'm introducing the folded piece really, really carefully. I wouldn't fling it in uh, so that it splashes and makes a load of air go in. I'm just putting it in really, really carefully. And replacing the lid between each uh, one I put in. Now, it's ter not terribly precise, this. Uh, if if you wanted to get repeatable results, you would have to time it exactly and take it out. I just don't care what it looks like when it comes out. It's going to be fantastic. So I've left, I've got three in there now. And I'm going to take one of them out. The first one that I put it in, out in a second. And when I take it out, I try not to drip it back into the indigo dye bath for the same reason as I'm putting it in really, really carefully. So just look at that green. That's the fantastic green when it hits the air and starts to oxidise. So this next bit, it's just magical. It really is. So I got some scissors and I snipped the strings that I'd uh, wound round. And look, the blue is oxidised and the green hasn't yet oxidised and the white is where it was enclosed inside and the dye couldn't get to it. So that's made a kind of stripy um, white and blue cloth there. All that green will go. All that green will become blue. So now squeezing out, this is the one with the little clips on. Uh, and then another one comes out as that one goes in taking off the ties there. You can see the green. It looks great against the blue sky, doesn't it? And where I've concertinaed the fabric together, it's white, where the dye can't get to, but then the green becomes blue, just like a photograph developing. It's, it's absolutely fantastic to watch. So I folded that one in a particular way and as I say it doesn't really matter what they look like. I'm going to cut these into what eight and a half inch squares and sew them together very randomly so it doesn't really matter what design I get. But that one's got a lovely, oh here's another one coming out now. There's a lot of green on this one. This is going to be a very blue one when it's done. Oh God, I think they're just gorgeous. You see what I mean about that green though? Wouldn't it be nice if it stayed that colour? <laughs> it doesn't. This is what your denim jeans were, uh, are dyed with. This is denim blue. Look at that, isn't that lovely? So if you watched it for long enough, you can see the green disappearing and the blue intensifying as it develops. There's no other dye behaves like this. So this is the one with the pegs then. I've taken it out and it's gone, um, you know, that beautiful dark green. And it just gets darker and darker and then turns blue. And actually the phone rang while I was doing this. So there's a big jump now <laughs> in what I, I'm able to show you. Because it carries on developing whether I'm there or not. <laughs> and I liked the sky. I think it looks like the sky with clouds, doesn't it? So this is the one with the pegs then. I'm just going to take all those little pegs off. I think that was a cat's tail there. And then see what that reveals. This is the pipe then. 
with uh, the fabric wrapped around it and the string is wrapped around there and it comes off and it makes a kind of a I think it looks like animal prints when this comes off it looks like zebra or I love it it's just brilliant and that one I folded before I wrapped it on so you get that um, that right angle oh, here's the one with the clips now that's nice and I think this was the last one this one was the very scrunched up one I like that one best of all actually so I hang them all on the washing line and really they need a really really good rinsing now there's the green just developing out of that one and becoming blue and they look I love, I love them against the sky but then they do need a really good rinsing so in a minute uh, I think it's coming up I got my hose pipe and I I rinse the um, the dye onto the grass you can see that one on the right now is nearly all blue here's the hose pipe now I'm just rinsing this so what I'm going to do then is rinse it with cold water like that and then I'm going to actually put them all through the washing machine uh, just on a rinse cycle I won't need to use any soap I'll just use maybe a couple of handfuls of salt which will help to set the dye although it does fade this kind of um, dye process it fades that's part of its charm you do need a good day to do this it's a good idea to um, to have a lovely sunny day yeah I think I do I think I like that one best of all the one that looks like the sky behind it Yeah, all the greens develop now. It's all blue. Now the indigo dye bath that I made is still good. So I can do some more dyeing in it. It will stay fine uh, with the lid on for a little while. Oh, that's right. I found another one in the, <laughs> in the bottom of the bucket. So there is one more to undo. Oh, good. <laughs> Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, so the dye bath, uh, I can use that again tomorrow, day after, if I want to. It just gets less um, potent the longer you dye in it, obviously, until uh, you exhaust the dye bath and, uh, and it becomes very, very pale blue, which can also be very beautiful too. But it's really easy to make up a new dye bath. So while the weather's lovely, and if I want to do some more, it's very easy to do it outside here does make your hands go blue even with gloves on so let's see what does this one look like you can get some interesting blue string as well well this one I think was quite tightly yeah this one was quite tightly concertina together so there's a lot of white in this one and those stripes there and those little uh, bits along the stripes all going to turn a beautiful blue. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. It's been a long time in the coming because I did this video um, saying I was going to do this such a long time ago, but I've been waiting for the right weather, the right kind of energy for me to want to do it. But now I'm back on track with this project now. And after these have been through the washing machine and dried and cut up, maybe I'll get started with those Pajagi curtains. I do eventually get round to finishing everything I start. I know it doesn't feel like it sometimes, but I honestly do. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.